Come on, let's give another hand for our young people, y'all. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Ephesians 5 and 25. And I want to welcome you to our second installment of the 2021 Family Conference. Uh, we're going to be speaking to the husbands today on what it means to honor your wife which is the title of the message. Uh, we're using a common set of passages, but I believe it's going to be spoken in an uncommon way, not because it's me, but it's what the Lord is speaking in this hour. Men, I want to speak to you. And all the men said, I want to see if it's going to be amen or amen. We all learn things that we need to know about our work. We learn our craft. We learn our, pleasure, our pleasures and our pastimes. Some men even take golf lessons just to learn how to not be so frustrated when they play golf. But we turn around and say things like this. Women, I just can't figure them out. I just soon do whatever she wants because if I don't, it just ain't going to be fun. And hence is birthed the worst doctrine I have ever heard in my life. And some of y'all are going to think I'm crazy when I say it because it's spoken from almost every pulpit in America and the world. But I believe today we're going to see that it's not true. And that's the doctrine of happy wife, happy life. I believe it's a cop-out. For God's best. And if a wife says, yeah, but I, I want that thing, whoop, whoop, I, give me some of that. And, and we just want husband just to do what pleases us. But you're cutting yourself short. You really are. I get it. It's the easy way out. And it's spoken all over, but it doesn't mean that God accepts that mindset. Ladies, the phrase happy wife, happy life might even sound good to you because then you can simply direct and expect your husband to do whatever you want. Sounds good. But in reality, you're missing out on the blessings of God. How many times has a husband thought, if I just knew what she wanted, but I just don't know what it is. And how many times has a wife thought, I just wish my husband knew enough to give me what I wanted without me having to tell him. Yeah, I knew there'd be some amens there. I do not believe that happy wife, happy life, doctrine answers these two desires. But I believe God is going to give us an answer today that's going to answer both of these. And it's going to take it to a greater level than we even expected. So today, husbands, you're going to learn how to honor your wife. Now, we're in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, and I want you to follow along as best as you can because I'm not going to be reading from the New Living Translation, the New King James. I'm actually going to be reading from the Message Bible. And, but I want you to follow along anyway and listen to how this is written out. Husbands. Go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves his father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery, but I don't, and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me, though, is the way Christ treats the church. 
And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself in loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Now, I really want to focus on verse 25, because that's where we're going to pick up everything. And I, once again, it's from the Message Bible. It says, husbands, go all out. Go all out in your love for your wives. Exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not taking. Boy, it's quiet in here. That's my first point. Go all out. Are there any men in the house? Yeah, you're awful quiet. I promise you this, men. When you first fell in love with your wife, when you was trying to woo her, you went all out to create an atmosphere that you didn't just tolerate her, but you were chasing her to the point where she felt pursued. She felt valued in your eyes to the point where she actually said, I do. The problem with most men is when that day came, the chase was over. You had won your prize, and that's exactly how most wives feel in their marriage. And it's also why women will leave their husbands for the next person who will chase them. They never wanted to feel unappreciated. They never wanted to feel unloved. They never wanted to feel unpursued. Just because they said, I do, doesn't mean you quit chasing. And all the ladies said, Amen. and yes, I'm speaking to the church about marriages in the body of Christ. Paul is giving a direct correlation between Christ laying down his own identity, listen to this, his own agenda, his own desires for us as the example of a husband on how they're supposed to live in their relationship with their wife. Jesus' identity became about the bride. Jesus' identity became about the bride. The bride became the, the agenda of Christ. Most men will chase that, that fiancé until they become the wife and then make life about their own agenda. Mm. Mm. So Jesus loved mankind even when we did things that were wrong. Listen to me. When we made mistakes, it did not stop his relentless pursuit. I want to prove that to you. You weren't there before Jesus died for your sins. Before you could ever get it right. While we were still sinners, he died for us. And watch, he's still pursuing us now. Even now. When you get born again, He doesn't quit pursuing you. In fact, He's on the right hand of the Father ever making intercession for every one of us. This is the heart of a husband for his bride. How many of you men have a craft of some sort? Come on, raise your hand. If you have a job, you had to learn the nuances of that job, the expectations of that job. The craft, what it takes to satisfy the desires of the one who hires you and pays you. And there are times when you might not like what he's asking of you, but it's your occupation. So you learn how to deal with it, overcome, you learn to adapt that skill. So even when your employer might not like you personally, it cannot get away from the fact that you have honed your skills so much that you have become irreplaceable. That is literally the goal of every person working. My dad told me this when I was graduating high school, and he never finished the ninth grade. He looked at me and said, Son, I don't care if you get half in college or if you get it with your hands. You become the best you could be at what you do, and you'll always feed your family. He said, the day's coming where the only man left working is a quality craftsman. And so they're going to let the guys that are just coming in for a paycheck go. They're going to keep the craftsman. Hey, Pastor Lane, what does this have to do with marriage? Everything. Everything. 
If you had an employee like this, wouldn't you want to keep him? How is it that men can set their hearts to learn a craft, but never see that they need to learn their wives as though it were a craft? Pastor, you said it earlier, I don't understand her. And that's where you stop. That's not going all out. That's giving up. You didn't understand everything about your craft the first day you did it. I remember when Chris they all come to work with us. We had to drive all the way up north Louisiana to do a big old job. And we got up there, and hand, he had to grab a pair of channel locks. And I don't mean to embarrass you, Chris, but he grabbed them with both hands and was doing I said, no, you open it, you get it the right size and grab it with one. And he goes, well, wait, what? He had never grabbed a pair of channel locks. You don't have to tell him how to grab a pair of channel locks now. He'll grab it, flip it out of his hand, put it in the right place, and use that thing. Why? Because he learned the craft. So, Pastor Lane, how do we do this? Become a student of your wife. Men, go all out in learning her way. How she responds to adversity. How she responds to compliments and criticism. Learn her heart and how she prays. Learn her strengths and her weaknesses. Not that she's going to tell you any of them. you got to learn them. In fact, I remember the very first time, because I would always pray over my girls and I'd pray over my wife at night, and, and I said, Brenda, tonight I want you to lead in prayer. And I noticed something unusual. She started with the most distant relative, covering them in prayer, and worked her all the way back to herself last. And I sat there weeping. I said, God, you show me my wife's heart. Men, become a student of your wife. You say, but I'm the head of the household, and I'm going to go ahead with that attitude. That wasn't the attitude of Christ. Come on. Jesus said, the greatest among you is servant to all. I didn't come to be served, but to serve. I believe the Holy Ghost is all over this work. I see the entire point. We are called husbands by God, which literally means gardeners. So... We live in the South. Everybody loves gardens. If you're going to plant tomatoes, don't just grab some plants from Lowe's and go out there and throw them on the ground and, and walk away and come back three weeks later and say, where's my tomatoes? Y'all laughing because you know you ain't going to have any. No, instead what you're going to do is you're going to study the best way to plant them, how to nourish them, how to take care of them. Study the soil composition. Study how much sunlight they need, how much water they need. And if you study them enough, you'll figure out what's missing whenever the tomatoes don't respond to what you're doing and you can make the necessary changes. You say, Pastor Lane, why would you put that much effort into tomato plants? Because you love tomatoes. You went all out. If you can learn a craft by studying and trying and studying and trying and learning and trying, if you can perfect your craft in the workplace, do not tell me you cannot become a student of your wife. Go all out. Become a student of what makes her tick. And as you do, you'll begin to apply what you're learning. And when you apply something without her asking for it, she goes, Wait, what? Come on, y'all. Y'all know that's true. When that husband does something that you didn't ask for, that he's never done before without you asking for, you say, what's changed? Come, am I right this morning? You begin to know what she wants before she asks. You'll begin to order for her before she tells you, what she wants and be accurate not controlling all the ladies said come on ladies y'all gotta help me here you'll begin to know how to protect her from her fears before she asks for your protection you become a student of her you'll begin to reach out a helping hand to assist her before she asks for it you'll reach your arm around her shoulders before her emotions say I'm hurting 
You'll begin to move for her without her expressing the need. Why? Because you have decided to become more of a student of the other half of who you are than learning a worldly craft. Men, if you are perfection at your craft and you don't love your wife because you didn't study her, you place your craft above your wife. And why would you put this much effort into it? Because you love her. Can I hear an amen? Now I need to say what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. I'm not saying become a student of her wrongs. We have a tendency to figure that out without having to study very hard. We don't like this and we don't like that. And we go, why did they do that? And why do they? And the enemy wants us, just like the prophetic word, the enemy wants us to look in the darkness. What separates us? What keeps us different? Why, she can't, why can't she like LSU football? Well, right now, because they're not good. <laughs> but the reality is we tend to focus on what comes easy. We won't make an intentional effort to carry their heart. Are any men listening to me right now? Amen. Literally, come on, man. We need to step up. Are y'all listening right now? We need to man up to the challenge because the enemy's challenging you. He's saying, yeah, you're a good workman, but you're nothing in your marriage. And you know what? He can be accurate in that until we take that away from him and make up our minds we're going to become students of our wife's heart. Become a student of everything going on in her. If you think she's wrong in certain areas and you start studying her, her heart, her heart, not the wrongs, her heart, you just might find out that you had a wrong understanding of her heart. But there was something else motivating her down on the inside. And you never took the time to see it. The greatest desire of a wife is to be loved. Men is to be respected. Wives is to be loved. And this is how she feels honored by her husband. And nothing says that you love her like becoming a student of her heart. Nothing. The other day I had to make a trip. And it was all about some, a relative that Brenda had that was going through something. And, and we drove all the way to cut off Louisiana to light a hot water heater. I didn't do it for any other reason than I knew it was close to her heart. Did y'all hear what I just said? Not everybody wants to get in a vehicle and drive two and a half hours one way just to light a hot water heater and turn around and drive back. I didn't want to. But I wanted her heart. And all the way back it was thank you, thank you, thank you. Men, are, are you listening, men? It's about their heart. Hard. I'm going to digress for just a moment. To simply do whatever she wants, happy wife, happy life, will not show her love and honor. All it is is kicking out of gear and simply obeying. So how do I do this? First point. You have to fall in love with her. You have to make up your mind that she is the one. Well, I'm not getting very much amen this morning. She is the one. If you're married now, she is the one, and there is no other. Don't look for another that might be easier to figure out because you're trying to duck what God's doing in your life. You're ducking His process. You are literally looking for a way to not go all out to study her. God, give me somebody that really likes LSU football. And really likes what I like and likes what I do and likes my wants and all these other things. And I'm going to keep going till I find one. I, I got news for you, man. God is big enough. If you choose another woman to try to get away from the process of becoming a student of her heart, God has the power to change that new woman. Because you can't duck his process. He has a process in place. And when we set our hearts to chase after his process, he brings this thing together. So just stop it.
Stop looking for somebody else. Why do you think God hates divorce so much? Because you are literally trying to get satisfaction that you will never have doing life your own way. But God has a satisfaction doing it His way that you never even knew existed until you start chasing it. It's God who ordains our footsteps. And if you're married, you're the one God chose. Say, but Pastor Lane, we went at it wrong and we was both sinners when it Are you married now? Men, she's the one. Why don't you turn to her right now and tell her, you're the one. I don't care how she looks back at you. <clears throat> Watch this. She is the one that God wants you to act like Jesus towards. She's the one God wants you to go all out to learn her heart. Because if you do, your love for her will become evident in everything you do. She will know it and be drawn even closer to your heart because of it. I need to say this right now. I know that there are outliers. There's exceptions to every rule. But it doesn't change the rule. I want to just give an example. They created a law in America saying that abortion is okay. Due to rape and incest, which is less than 1% of all abortions. So based on an exception, they've made a rule. How about make a rule and deal with exceptions? We make rules because they're right before God. And when you deal with the exceptions along the way. So what I'm telling you today, you say, yeah, but pastor, I know one instance. Okay, well, we'll deal with that exception. But that's an outlier. This is God's way. Y'all still good with me today? In studying her heart, you want to set your heart to honor what she honors. And one of the first things that a wife desires to be honored is her family. Her family, her siblings, her, her parents, her relatives, her parents and siblings are so close to her heart there will be times when you will have to protect her from them. And there will be times when you will have to assist them even though you do not agree with them. But it isn't as much about them as it is that they are close to her heart. And that's why you're honoring them because you're carrying your wife's heart inside your chest. Is anybody grabbing this? In studying her heart, you're going to find that there's something even closer than her family that she came from, and that's the children that came from her. Yes, they might be your children as well, but she carried those babies in her womb, and they heard her heart beat from the inside. Do you realize that you can honor your children and still discipline them at the same time? Watch this. You can honor your wife and discipline the children at the same time. But you can't just go buck wild and just, I'm going to whoop the fire out of them and everything else, and then she's caving in. And you say, well, I needed to discipline them, but you didn't do it in an honorable way. I tell you, 99% of the times when I had to pull off my belt, and I had to, and I went to discipline my children, when I got through, I would say these words. If I never have to grab this belt again, it'll be too soon. But I, if I have to do it again five minutes from now, I love you enough to do it to keep you from going down the wrong path. I love you that much. You understand me? Come here and let Daddy pray for you. Now, my wife, when I pulled the belt off, went... But by the time it was over, she felt like I had honored her children. Are we still listening? There's a way to do this thing right. God disciplines us, doesn't he? If he loves you, he does. The scripture says if he doesn't discipline, you're illegitimate. And he says, I will honor those who honor me. So discipline can be done in an honorable way to your wife. In fact, one of the first things I told Brenda when she was pregnant for Brandy... 
Brandy was, Brenda was eight months pregnant with Brandy. And I said, Brenda, the first time that child dishonors you, I'm going to whip the fire out of them. And she said, would you let the child be born first? I said, I'm just telling you. Because <laughs> that's one thing I cannot put up with. And my grandchildren come, sometimes they just get in and they're around B.B. so much, and B.B. asks them something, and they say, yeah. And I jump up out of the chair and say, what did you say? Don't you ever dishonor my wife in front of me. It's yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, Papa. You know what? I'm doing that to build in my children and to show my wife that I've got her back. She might even accept it, but I won't. I won't allow her to dishonor herself. When she says, I'm not that pretty, I said, hey, you talking about my wife. Don't you do that. I won't allow you to. Is anybody grabbing where this is going? In studying her heart, you will find that there is something else that is deep inside. And that is to feel financially protected. That doesn't mean that you got to spend all of your waking moments making money. But it does mean that you make financial decisions based on honoring her heart. Not just what you want, men. Well, I didn't get an amen, and the ladies are scared to say amen right there. Steer clear of those financial decisions that are going to make her stay up at night worrying about the future if something happens to you. You might be thinking, but wait a minute, what about me and what I want? What part of laying down your life for your spouse did you not understand? Besides, the more you study her heart, face it, the more it benefits you. She will fall in love with you even more because she sees what's flowing out of you. A husband's greatest desire should be to honor his wife. And from that, she desires to respect him. Isn't that what happened with Christ? He showed us how much he loves us. The Holy Spirit shows us in the Word. He laid down his life for us. He did this for us. And because of that, we respect and honor the Lord. That's next week's message, lady, on respecting your husbands. So I want to talk to you about bringing honor to your home. This heavenly foundation of honor is huge. And when we apply it in our marriages, it flows into our children, our workplaces, in our churches and community. If we set our hearts to honor each other, we're inviting God's foundational principle into our family. And that's how we guard our families from the kingdom of darkness. When we do this, honor begins to become the framework of our decisions. And then it goes even deeper. It will work its way into your prayer life. Y'all know that relative, men of your wives, that every time you hear their name, you go, <sighs> if you have your wife's heart, and you know that, yes, yeah, he's a knothead, and even your wife admits that they're a knothead, but her heart is breaking. Instead of going in prayer, <sighs> God's not going to answer that. You go into prayer saying, God, I pray that you rescue this individual. You save them and fill them with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. It, honor changes the way you pray. It'll work its way into your prayer life, your decision making, and eventually into every part of your life. You will even honor God, watch this, with your trust. When something comes at you and it, and it seems like a mountainous wall, you get that big C diagnosis. You get some coming at you. And in that moment, your body in yourself, you want to fear. But you say, God, I don't want to dishonor you by giving place to fear. I want to honor you that your word says and I'm going to stand in faith anyway. In that moment where something deep inside of you could lure you away and you honor God anyway, that wife is sitting there watching. And she says, if this couldn't move him off, nothing can. And gets right up next to her man. Men, I'm giving you keys to victory in your marriage right now. If you open up your heart to grab this. 
We stand on the promises of God no matter what. When everyone around us would, would be fine with us giving in to fear, but we honor God anyway, that wife is watching. So here's what happens in that moment. When the devil whispers, he's looking at this. And all the lady said, and then God allows something. Men, you didn't even know this. God allows something to come in your life. And you stand strong in Christ anyway. The Holy Spirit says, no, he ain't. Some ladies won't say amen to that. You know why? Because it's challenging you to honor trust. It's challenging your heart. To honor God in the midst. You say, but Pastor Lane, what, what if they really were? And I, and I just was trusting God. And, and he's big enough to tell you. Come on, he's big enough to love you through. If he didn't spare his only son, but through Christ, gave, he gave him up freely. How much more will he give us all things? Are there outliers? Are there mistakes made? Absolutely. But it's still an opportunity to just love people anyway. Can I hear a better man? When she sees you honoring the Lord deep from within and express, when you're there, listen, I do not let my wife open the door. I told her that doorknob does not fit her hand. It doesn't. And when Brandy was on staff here one day, I was going to the office, and she was too, and I had a big old box in my hand. She said, let me get the door for you, Dad. And I said, no, ma'am. I picked up the handle with my knee and pushed it open with a foot to hold the door open for her. Because in my heart and mind, if I will treat my daughter this honorably, she won't settle for somebody who's going to dishonor her. In my mind, that's where it was in my heart. We had a pastor and his wife come over one time and took them to eat. And after we was coming by the church to talk, and, and the pastor's wife reached out for the doorknob. I said, don't you touch that door. And I opened the door for her. She looked at her husband and said, you need to come spend about three weeks over here. Listen, it's not about a doorknob. It's being mindful of her heart. It's being mindful of what's going on inside of her. When you see her tensing up, you look around and you, you ought to be able to automatically recognize what's going on because you're a student of hers. And you reach up in there and say, hey, baby, what's going on here? Uh, 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 we got this. We got this. We started homeschooling the girls. We went to my daddy's. My daddy was a rough individual. And we walked up in there, and Brenda was standing over here, and I was, my dad was over here, and he turned around and looked at Brenda and said, How's my babies doing in homeschooling? I looked over at him and stepped right in front of Brenda and said, All questions concerning our children's schooling come to me. Brenda said, I didn't even realize it, but my shoulders went. She said, I didn't realize that I had already tensed up. I was afraid. And that's my, come on, men, that's our role to protect our wives even before they ask. When we set our hearts to go after our wife's heart and become a student of what makes them happy and what breaks them down, then we begin to show them that we're carrying their heart. Then you know what they'll do, men? They'll give it to you. They will place it in your hand and trust that God's big enough to guard it through you. Happy wife, happy life will not do that. It takes something so much greater. Saints, I believe this, men, this is how we honor our wives. Become a student. Start chasing. Go all out to learn your wife's heart. You say, Pastor, I'm scared to death. Good. It ought to make you so nervous that you get on your knees and say, God, I need you. Because he'll show you. Guess what? He's more, she is more his daughter than your wife. He knows her. He knows how to reveal to you her heart. He knows how, mm, I'm just following the Holy Ghost. He knows how to work through your chasing of her that will end up leading her out of her fear. That's the Holy Ghost. I don't know who that's for, but that's the Lord right there. 
Whatever that fear is, yeah, but you, that wife might have made a declaration what I will never do and I will never do because of the emotions and everything. And now she's still self accountable to that decision, even though the emotions are no longer there. But you will never know that until you start chasing her heart and the Holy Ghost can show you. Then you reach up in there and say, baby, give that to me. Give that to me. Come on. I'll carry you out of here. Let's go. I'm never going to leave your side. In that moment, she does this. I am not talking from a glass house. I'm talking from personal experience. I was married 11 years before I got saved. I had scars I put on my wife's heart. But when I found the love of God, I told my wife, I will love every scar off of your heart I ever put there. She says, oh, really? I said, oh, you're going to try to out-love me? This ought to be fun. You get in a win-win situation. Men, are you hearing me today? This is literally spiritual, heavenly gold if you take it home and apply it. Amen? I want everyone to bow your heads right now. You might be in here and say, okay, pastor, I hear what you're saying, but where does all this start? It starts with salvation. It starts with understanding that we cannot pay for our sins and we can't Saints, expect... Saints, you have just money. heard a spirit-led message. And I know that it's spoken to your heart. And where do these things stand with you? Where are you at right now with the Lord? Because everything you heard today can only lead you to a place of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You just heard me say live in the message, everyone bow your head. So I'm speaking to you right now. Have you ever given your heart to the Lord Jesus? And, and maybe you had at some point but you walked away. But right now, the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart. And you want to give your life to Christ or you want to come back to Him. If either one of those fits you, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to take being real with God in your heart. It's going to take you being wide open to Him and truthful and honest with Him. And if you are, the Lord's fixing to do something in your life. If that's you and you really mean it, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. And I cannot pay for my sin. But you love me so much that you sent your son Jesus. And he took my punishment. He paid the price for my sin. I repent of my sin, Lord. Forgive it. Cover it with the blood of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And from this day forward, Jesus is Lord of my life. Amen. I want to tell you something. Did you mean that with all of your heart? Because if you did, God just covered all of your sins with the precious blood of His Son. Do you know what that means? That means that God can no longer see you at your worst. He only sees your life at His Son's best. That means you are welcome to come into the presence of the Lord. You don't have to be ashamed because it's paid for. What kind of awesome God is this? And the devil's been trying to convince you that God is mad at you whole time the truth is, is God is madly in love with you instead I want to rejoice with you saints here's what you need to do this isn't the end it's only the beginning you need to find a church that teaches the word of God and truth and you need to get plugged in you say well pastor what about coronavirus let the spirit of the Lord lead you and you follow him the devil's been leading people to destruction for centuries. Now it's time for the Spirit of God to lead you. Get plugged in. Learn more about the Word. Search God's Word. Asking God's Spirit to reveal that Word. But do not stop here. It's just the beginning. Amen? 
God bless you and looking forward to seeing you.